Perceived Lack, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long belong in us. Always we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there He put the man whom He had formed out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, perceived lack is perhaps the most powerful tool that Satan uses to get us to sin. He tempts us to think that we're missing out, FOMO, fear of missing out, and somehow he gets us tripping over the re resources that God has granted to us to find some little thing that we think we lack in our lives, and we'll wreck our lives over that. Listen to this concept out of the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, God had provided Adam and Eve with an abundance of blessings. They lived in a perfect paradise, surrounded by beauty and provision with everything that they needed. Yet despite the dwelling in the midst of God's generous abundance, they became fixated on the one tree that God had instructed them not to eat from. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil stood in the very center of the garden. Adam and Eve had to walk past all the good trees God gave them in order to reach this tree of perceived lack. Rather than gratefully partaking in God's bountiful provision, they chose to focus on one limitation. Deceived by the serpent, Eve took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. How often do we make the same mistake as Adam and Eve, focusing on perceived lack rather than on the abundance of blessings that God has given us? We must guard against the temptation to always yearn for the things we don't have, missing out on the gratefully enjoying the many good things that we do have. Paul reminds us that godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's keep our eyes fixed on God's gracious provision rather than becoming ensnared by deceptive perceptions of lack. For if we delight ourselves in the Lord and the abundance He provides, God promises He will give us the desires of our heart. Mighty Father God, forgive us for living with this perceived lack as the very center point of our fixation and attention. Help us, God, to instead perceive the rest of the garden, that garden of abundance and provision that you've brought into our lives, the good and the, the right and the blessed that you've brought into our lives. Help us to enjoy richly all things you've already provided. And, and we do pray that you would provide for us those things that we do have actual need of in our lives. We pray that you'd help us not to allow our, our desires for some perceived lack in our life to lead us astray to moral bankruptcy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Have a great day.